So today we're going to talk about diameter, radius, circumference, and area. The first thing we're going to look at is what each of these is represented by. So when we talk about diameter, we're talking about a lowercase d. When we talk about radius, we're talking about a lowercase r. When we talk about circumference, we're talking about a capital C. And when we're talking about area, we're talking about a capital A. And you also need to remember pi, and pi equals to 3.14. And I want you to recall the formula for pi, for solving for pi. So pi equals circumference divided by diameter. So the pi of, an, of a circle is always going to be the same. It's when you take your circumference of a circle and you divide it by your, your uh, diameter, and that's going to give you the um, val value each and every time of 3.14. It is an ongoing number. We only use the first two digits to express it. So now I'm going to show you on our circle here where each of these lines are. So if this if our center of our circle is right there where that blue dot is, your diameter would go from one end of the circle cutting through the center to the other end. So that is represented by the lowercase d. Radius would be from the center of the circle to one end. So it doesn't go all the way across to the top, it just goes from the center to the one end and that is known as radius. And when we talk about uh, circumference, we're referring to the area all the way around. So it is similar to perimeter of a circle and that is represented by our circumference. And then lastly we talk about area and area is the space in between. So all of the space in between the circle is known as your area. Okay, so now we know what each of these letters represents. I'm going to give you the formulas, the basic formulas that you're going to be using through this unit. Again, these are formulas that we've already discussed in class, but it's just to give you a quick review. So, the formula for circumference, so whenever you're solving for a circumference, the capital C is equal to pi times the diameter. So pi multiplied by the diameter is going to give you the circumference. When we're looking at our diameter, or trying to solve for diameter, the diameter equals your radius times 2. So if you look at your radius right here, this is your radius, this line right here, you know that if you multiply the radius twice the amount, so if you add the radius up here as well, it's going to give you the same length all the way across the circle. So that's why diameter is simply represented by your radius multiplied by itself two times, and so when you multiply it twice, you end up with the same uh, line that goes straight across as your diameter. Okay, and now the formula for radius, radius equals your diameter divided by 2. And again, if we look at our diameter, our diameter is right here. If I was to divide this into two equal pieces, I would end up with the radius. Okay, so again, diameter, when we divide it by 2, if we were to cut it in half, if we took out this end, we would end up with our radius similar to this. So again, Half, uh, halfway into the circle, so from the center out to the side is your radius, from the end to the end is your diameter, and the formula for radius is your radius equals diameter divided by 2. And the last formula I'm going to give you is the formula for area, and area equals pi times r squared, and I want you to keep in mind what r squared means. We all, we've discussed this before, so r squared is r times itself. So r times r, it does not equal r times 2, it is r times r. So whatever the r, r represents, so if r represents a radius of 4, then your radius here would be 4 times 4, okay, not 4 times 2. So first thing we're going to talk about is uh, solving for circumference when a diameter is given. So I'm going to draw a circle here. And let's say in the equation they give you the diameter. So they give you the value of from end to end right across. And they say the diameter is, let's say in this case, 12 meters. And so they want you to solve for circumference. So what you're going to do is on your circle, so you can draw your diagram, you indicate what you're solving for. So you're solving for circumference, which is all the way around. So this is are unknown. This is what we're solving for. So now recall back to the previous page. I want you to think of the formula that you're going to use. I want you to go ahead and solve it. So you're going to pause the video right now and then you're going to come back and you're going to see whether you got it right. So go ahead and pause it and welcome back. And now that you thought about it, you've got a drawing, you've got a formula. So the formula we're going to use is circumference equals pi times diameter. 
and we know that we don't know the value of c, so we're going to continue to write it. Our equal sign stays in the same place. We knew the value of pi is 3.14, so I'm going to write that down. And if I look right over here, it gives me the value of my diameter, so I'm going to take that value and I'm going to put it in right over here. So the value of my diameter is 12. Okay, and then again, we just go ahead and we start solving. 3.14 times 12 is 37.8. And again, you go back to units of measurement, it is in meters, so we're going to indicate our units of measurement as meters. Now let's say this said to round to the nearest meter. So if I was rounding to the nearest meter, I would always first write down my whole number, then I'd go to my digit, I know this is my meters digit, I look at the, the digit next to it, I say is this number 5 or greater, or is it less than 5? It is 5, it is greater than 5, so it's going to donate 1 to the 7, so my approximate value of my circumference, if I was rounding to the nearest meter, would be 38 meters. And I just wanted to make sure that you got that answer as well, and that way you have that down. So the next concept we're looking at is solving for circumference when radius is given. And again, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my circle in. So if this was my circle, and the information being given to me is from the center out, so my radius has been given to me, and it is 9 centimeters. And so if it's 9 centimeters, I know that this is going to take me two parts to complete this question, so I'm going to go ahead and do those two parts. Again, I want you to pause it, I want you to try it out, and then I want you to come back and take a look if you got it right. So go ahead and pause the video, and welcome back. And now that you're back, I want you to see if you got the same thing as me. So in order to do this, the first thing I need to do is I need to find my diameter. So without solving for my diameter, I will not be able to get the whole answer. So I need to solve for diameter. I need to know what the whole value of that is from end to end. So I look at my formula for diameter, and diameter's formula is diameter equals radius times 2. I say, okay, so I need to solve for diameter. I know my radius is 9. I multiply by 9 by 2. My diameter equals 18 centimeters. So I've solved for the first part. Now go back to the previous question and think about it. So you have your diameter now. Now I have my value of my diameter, and I have my value of my radius, and I am now solving for my circumference. So now I'm solving for circumference. So I go back and I say, I know the formula for circumference. Circumference equals uh, pi times diameter. And I go ahead and I plug in my value. Circumference equals pi is 3.14 multiplied by my diameter, which I found out was 18. So I go ahead and I keep solving. And I know that my answer is going to be 56.52 centimeters and again let's say it said to round to the nearest centimeter I know that this is the digit I want to round to I look at the digit next to it I say is this five or greater and in this case yes it is so my average or approximate circumference is going to be 57 centimeters and again take a look at this go through it if you need to go through it twice make sure you've got the correct answer make sure you understand it in this case, let's say the equation or the uh, problem said solve for diameter and radius when circumference is given. So I'm going to go ahead again, I'm drawing my circle, and let's say the circumference is given around the circle, and your circumference value is, um, let's say, 30 uh, millimeters. So I know my circumference is given, and in this case I'm solving for my diameter. I don't know what my diameter is, and a big question mark there and I don't know what my radius is either. I'm solving for both my diameter and my radius. I have no idea what they are. So the best thing to do in this case is go back to the formulas that you know. You know the formula for circumference. So if we were solving for circumference, the formula would be diameter multiplied by pi. And now you're solving for diameter. So remember when we talked about algebra and trying to get variables on its own? You want to get that diameter on its own on one side of the equation because that's what you want to solve for. So the opposite of multiplication is division, and whatever we do to one side, we do to the other side. So if I was to divide this side by pi to get rid of the pi on this side, I would divide this side by pi as well. So my formula then would be uh, circumference divided by pi equals diameter and I know my formula now so all I did was I switched I switched around a formula using my algebraic knowledge and I was able to swap around my formula so I know to find out diameter I need to take my circumference I need to divide it by pi so I'm going to go ahead and do that now so I know my circumference is 30 
and I know the value of pi is 3.14 and I know that when I do this I'm going to end up with a value of di my diameter. So I go ahead and I do the math and I end up with an answer of, and again it's not an exact answer, it's going to be 9.55 with an ongoing number and the answer was in millimeters, so I'm going to put my millimeters in, and that's my diameter. Now I have my diameter, I need to go from diameter to radius, and we know the formula for diameter to radius is radius equals diameter times, sorry, not times two, that's diameter divided by two. If I was to multiply it by two, I'd actually make it much larger than it was supposed to be. So it's diameter divided by two. So again, radius is half the amount of my diameter, so I'm dividing my diameter into two, and I'm getting my radius. So radius equals 9.55 divided by two. So my radius equals approximately, again, uh, 4.77 millimeters, and you just worked your way backwards. So in this case, you had your circumference, you solve for diameter, and you solve for radius. And again, I want to make sure that you got that right, so you've paused it, you've taken a look at it, and you've come back and you've seen it done correctly. So the last and final thing we're going to be looking at is area, and we're going to solve for area if my diameter is given, and again, I'm going to draw my circle in, and let's say my diameter is given, and this time I'll call it a value of 3 meters. And if my diameter is given, it's given to me as 3 meters, I need to solve for my area. And so I go back and I say, what is the formula for area? And I say area equals pi times r squared. So in order to use the area formula, I actually need to know the value of my radius and not my diameter. So I have to say, okay, I have my diameter. I need to get the value of my radius. What am I going to do? So I go back and I think about my formulas and I say, I need to solve for radius. So radius equals diameter divided by two. Again, remember the radius is half of the diameter. So we divide the number by two. So radius equals three divided by two radius equals, and I divide my 3 by 2, end up 1.5 meters. And so now I have an answer for my radius, which I can plug in to my um, area formula up here. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. So if I have area, that's what I'm solving for, I have 3.14 as my value of pi. I know my value of r is 1.5 because I solved it, and I know that it's the power of 2. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to break this down to a couple extra steps so you can see what I'm doing. You don't have to do the next step that I'm doing, but it is going to be a breakdown. So area equals 3.14, and I want you to recall that 1.5 to the power of 2 means 1.5 times 1.5. And again, I don't do the 3.5 multiplied by 1.5 and then square it because that would be going opposite of bed mass. Bed mass tells me to do exponents first. I'm going to solve my exponents first and then I'm going to multiply. So again, continuing on, area equals 3.14 and I go ahead and I follow bed mass and I do my um, exponent first. So 1.5 times 1.5 equals uh, 2.25 and again you know you made a mistake when your radius ends up being the value as your diameter again then you know you've multiplied by 2 and you haven't done the exponent so if you end up with the same diameter again you need to go back and make sure you've gotten that right so now area I go ahead and now I do the multiplication and I get a value of 7.065 meters squared and let's say it told me to round to the nearest uh, hundredth of a meter so I know this is my hundredth uh, value I look over to the next value next to it it is large it is five and larger so it is going to donate one to my six so therefore my approximate value of my area is going to be 7.7 7 meters squared and again don't forget here to square your meters because if you don't square your meters, you're not referring to it as area. Area is always in squared. So even if it was centimeters, you do centimeters squared. If it was millimeters, you do millimeters squared, but you need to make sure that you square that number in order for it to be the area.